deputy put his life on the line trying to catch a fleeing criminal. A woman drags the deputy with her car, then a high speed chase topping more than 100 miles per hour. It was all caught on video. Here's News 13's Emily Younger. Well, Dean Jessica, this dash cam video shows everything. A New Mexico deputy who narrowly escapes death while trying to arrest a suspect who had other ideas. Get out of the car now. Dash cam video captures the tense moments as a Lee County deputy is forced to draw his weapon after a dispute escalates. I had loaned her some money to get a car, right? And she was selling the car to this lady. It all happened in late March. Vivian Condarco, the woman in the orange, flags down Sergeant Jeff Walker on this road near Hobbs. She tells Walker someone is trying to steal her car. She's not even driving the car, she was trying to sell it. Kandarko then gets back in her car while Walker looks up her license plate number. I just ran that plate. The sergeant soon realizes Kandarko is wanted by police for violating probation. Step out of the car, please. Vivian, don't do this. You're going to go to jail. I don't care. When Walker attempts to arrest Kandarko, she starts to take off. He clings to her door and is drug face first on the ground. When he gets up, get out of the car! Stop! Stop the car! Kandarko flees. We got battery on a peace officer. She's running. Beginning a more than 10 minute long high speed chase. Speeds at 110. Then Kandarko makes a bold move. She does a U turn in the middle of the highway. Walker behind her the whole time. Rams into the side of her car. But this isn't over yet. She flees again. Several miles later, she's stopped by spike strips. Walker is still at the scene of the crash, limping, waiting for paramedics to arrive. Now, Walker was taken to the hospital after the crash. He suffered some scrapes and bruises, but is back on the job. Back to you. All right, thank you, Emily. Kondarko is still behind bars tonight. She's charged with aggravated battery against a police officer. A father beat up the 18-year-old when he found him sexually abusing his young son. Fox's Kelly Joyce reports. This is what one father did to a man accused of sexually attacking his son. That Daytona father called 911 early this morning after the beating. I just walked in and found a grown man molesting and I got him in a bloody puddle for you right now, officer. The 35-year-old father tells the 911 operator he just left for a little while, and when he came back, he says he thought he heard something in a back bedroom. I looked away, and I said, what's going on? And he stood up, and his pants fell around his ankles. I knew what was going on, and I did whatever he had a right to, except I didn't kill him. Police showed up to find 18-year-old Raymond Frolander unconscious on the floor. He went to the hospital, then was taken to the jail and faced a judge today. Police Chief Mike Chitwood says Frolander admitted to sexually battering the boy for the past three years. You discover that he has been uh, sexually abusing him in your home. You know, father, father did what a father had to do. Police found Frolander motionless on the floor of the apartment where the sexual battery occurred. First responders had to take him to the hospital to be checked out. I can't give an ambulance. He's going to need one. Were there any weapons involved? My fist and my foot. Police say the victim told them Frolander had been assaulting him since he was eight years old. You think to yourself, here's a young man whose innocence was taken away from him. You know, eight, eight to 11 year olds should be outside riding their bike and playing sports and playing video games. Frolander did not receive a bond and will stay in jail for the time being. Investigators are making sure he has not victimized any other children. And get this, police said Frolander admitted he had sexual relationship with the victim, reportedly saying, I'm guilty at the end of his interview with police. As for the father, he's not facing any criminal charges. Jason Browning is now coming forward. It's full of mixed emotions right now. And it's, this whole situation is, is very, very difficult. Browning says when he walked into his apartment and found Frolander naked with his 11-year-old son, he lost it. Not only did he beat him, he says he went to the kitchen, returned with a knife, and he says almost went too far. When I was going to kill him, my son is the one who stepped in front of me and stopped. My son saved his attacker's life. So who's really the hero in this situation? Browning says Frolander was like family, and it was not unusual for him to be alone with his kids, a decision he now regrets. There was nothing uncommon to let the kids go in the bedroom and play video games together. Mm -hmm. And now I have to wonder 
Why the door was shut? Browning says he too was victimized as a child. He says stopping the attack was the easy part. Talking to his son about it has been much more difficult. Someone has been robbing pharmacies, and tonight Spokane County Sheriff's deputies say they have their man. Deputies arrested 24-year-old Aaron Miller on suspicion of multiple robbery counts after a medicine shop employee pepper sprayed him. Miller had to call for emergency help, which led to his arrest. It was a big bear, too. <laughs> Inside the medicine shop in Deer Park, store manager Susan Beller knows all of her customers. All right, your prescription is ready. And, and yesterday Bell, afternoon, okay. as she was filling prescriptions, one customer walked in who hey. Susan recognized all too well, Aaron Miller. A police sketch kept on the counter was the same man detectives say robbed the store two times before. And one of my technicians walked past me and said, we're being robbed, it's him, he's back. Susan then approached Miller but played it cool. Miller handed her a note. And the paper said, gun, um, give me all, all was underlined, oxycodone and methadone. Susan then went back to the medicine shelves. I was just thinking, you know, my head was going, what, what should I do? And came up with a plan. Since the last robbery, Susan bought pepper spray, and not just any pepper spray, but counter assault bear deterrent. The woman who always helps patients had lost her patience. You can see in the surveillance video, she lets him have it and chases Miller out of the store. The deciding factor for me is I know how far away law enforcement is here in Deer Park. I know that we um, are going to have to kind of take care of ourselves. What Susan did was awesome. Employee Susan Burton's instincts kicked in too. If you watch this video one more time, you can see she chased Miller out with a bat. Well, Miller apparently had so much of that pepper spray sprayed in his face that when he ran home, his parents actually called paramedics, and that's how authorities caught up with him. And unfortunately, there's nothing behind the counter for Miller that will help ease that pepper spray pain. He'll just have to flush that out. And Whether you want to hear it or not, Mr. Brogan, you're an animal. An angry admonishment from Fulton County Superior Court Judge Alfred Dempsey to defendant Tyler Grogan. You're shooting at police, you violated that woman, and you don't want to hear it. Well, you're going to hear it, and I don't give a rat's behind whether you like it or not. Wednesday, a jury convicted the Roswell man of nearly 30 charges stemming from this May 2011 standoff at the Aspen Point Apartments. Prosecutors say Grogan robbed two people here, then held them hostage for hours, repeatedly raping a woman as the SWAT team closed in. As Judge Dempsey prepared to sentence Grogan, he cursed. Oh, sit him down, sit him down. Uh, given the defendant's actions, I got a different sentence I'm going to impose now. Seven consecutive life sentences plus 270 years in prison. His attorney told the judge Grogan is sorry for what happened and blamed his behavior on demons.